Hi, everybody. My name is Dominic, and welcome to your Bridge MLS new member orientation. Congratulations on joining and becoming new members. We are proud of you. Um, so today I am going to be uh, going over um, a couple of uh, cursory things like who we are, um, what being a Bridge MLS member entails. We'll also uh, be going over uh, things like uh, Paragon and Connect MLS, uh, the platforms that you'll use with us, as well as your member benefits um, and stuff like that. So um, we are expecting to, um, uh, we, we have two hours allotted for this section uh, and then beginning at two, uh, Lynn, our compliance specialist, will hop on and she will uh, give you an overview of uh, MLS rules and everything that comes with uh, compliance and our compliance system. Uh, if we do end a bit early, uh, which is possible, uh, I am more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. We will be pausing uh, briefly uh, for questions and anytime that anything comes up, just just uh, type a message in that chat box and I will get to it as soon as I can. Um, also, if we do end early, I am more than happy to go into greater detail on anything that uh, you guys uh, would like me to expand upon. Uh, so feel free to give those questions uh, and I can always, uh, if I'm going too fast, I can always slow down and, and uh, go back and, and cover things that I may have uh, gone too fast on. All right, so Bridge MLS. All right, who are we? So MLS, we are a multiple listing service. So uh, what we do essentially is we house listing data uh, uh, for uh, realtors. And so our vision is uh, to support participants, that would be you guys, uh, to succeed and most importantly, profit. Uh, so our mission here is uh, that we would like to provide participants, you guys, access to reliable data through innovative technology. So we have a big emphasis on two things here reliable data and innovative technology. So reliable data, what does that mean? Reliable data um, is listing data um, through you know, a long period of time. We'll, we'll cover in a sec just exactly how long that period of time is. Um, and we go through great lengths through NAR standards and our own standards, CAR standards as well, uh, of maintaining data that is truthful, uh, fair, and we hold everybody to a high standard uh, in uh, assurance of market fairness. And we pride ourselves on taking steps to have uh, accurate data that truly reflects what goes on the market, what is actually on the market, uh, as well as the hist history of the market. Uh, and then also innovative technology here. So we at Bridge MLS are on the cutting edge of um, uh, technology when it comes to real estate. Uh, we are constantly adding uh, new and groundbreaking uh, technology and applications from third-party vendors. And often, um, if you have access to something through us, often, sometimes we are one of the first MLSs in Northern California to have said application. We're always looking uh, to improve user experience uh, and that means uh, embracing the new and embracing technology uh, that can really push you forward and give you a true advantage in the marketplace. Uh, so we service the Delta Association of Realtors and Bridge Association of Realtors. Uh, the direct coverage area for that uh, would be Alameda and Contra Costa counties and um, you are likely a member of either if you are here right now in this um, meeting. So uh, I'll take a brief little pause here. And if there's any questions here, anything that I can um, 
expand on here, uh, please let me know. All right, all good, all good. So platforms. So as an MLS, um, what we do is we, um, we house uh, listing data uh, and that listing data is then searchable uh, to you guys. Uh, it's searchable um, through all time, everything that we have uh, through our history, um, including, you know, from, uh, from the inception to till now. And um, so you can uh, search through um, our platforms, you can create automatic searches uh, to clients, you can set up client portals, uh, as well as list the listings themselves. And so the platforms are where you go ahead and do these things. And more, we'll get into that in a second. And so we have two main platforms here that you will be using uh, as a member of Bridge MLS. We have Connect MLS uh, by Dyna Connections. Dyna Connections is the developer of Connect MLS. And we have Paragon by Black Knight MLS Solutions. So these uh, are two platforms, um, high capacity platforms. Uh, they're really like really all in one platform. They have almost everything that you'll need on them. Uh, they're, they're great tools and they're what you're going to be using most of uh, your time with us, uh, most likely. Uh, and I am going to uh, now give you uh, a brief overview of what is entailed uh, in Paragon and Connect MLS and what sorts of things you can do with that. All right, so uh, Paragon 5, the fifth version of it, um, the most recent version. So uh, these two screenshots here, uh, this is uh, your homepage in the help section. We'll get into those a little more in a second. Uh, a couple quick things to note about Paragon uh, is that it is a legacy system, meaning it's been around for quite some time. And uh, because of that, there's been some changes to Paragon. Um, mostly, uh, I, I think the one of the greater changes uh, is the report styles. So uh, when you're looking at like a listing report uh, for a property, um, that how that report has uh, templated has changed over time. But because um, you know there's quite a, a great history here, and people are are used to um, certain things, you know, not everybody wants uh, changes. There are options to uh, stay on with those um, older formats. So there is availability for um, for older report styles um, to be uh, viewed, but uh, you know. You're likely, as new members especially, you're likely going to be wanting to view uh, the newer ones, but I digress. Um, primarily here, what a legacy system uh, means, uh, yes. Uh, are the oh. screens, uh, hi, this hi. is Lorraine, hi. Are oh. the screens changing? I'm not seeing anything different. Oh, I'm sorry to, to hear that. Um, are you just seeing the one with that logo, that first? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, there, there it is. It changed. Oh, okay. okay. How about now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank Great. you so Thank much you. for letting me know. Okay. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. So here's our uh, here's our Paragon screen. I hope everyone can see this now. Um, so Paragon has data that goes um, all the way back to 1996. So this is um, a great advantage. Uh, you have qu quite a large breadth of um, uh, data and history to see and compare. Um, and uh, as I was mentioning earlier, there are uh, multiple report layouts uh, that go th back through uh, kind of the legacy of the older report types, but there's also a, a bunch of different current ones that display um, different uh, types of information as well as just different layouts that are appropriate for uh, you know different roles here in um, in the listing process, such as agent reports, 
versus client reports, something that like you might want versus the, you know something with a little less info that you would want to, to share with clients. So you have access uh, to both of that. Um, and we'll touch on, they, they do have quite a bit of uh, help and tutorial uh, options available here. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna just go into um, at a kind of quick glance some of the uh, features that Paragon has uh, in uh, a little more specific detail. Um, so something that Paragon has uh, on their homepage, which has quite a few tools, uh, is the quick search. You'll see that in the slide, uh, the top. Uh, the top photo right there at the very top, right above those icons. I don't know if you guys can see my mouse, but I'm uh, kind of circling around it here. It's at the very top. Uh, so that is the quick search. So the quick search is a nice uh, quick way in the name uh, to search for a single listing. So you can enter an address or an MLS number, which is um, a number that is gonna be associated with a listing. Uh, once it is published as a reference number, so you can track that specific listing as there will be uh, multiple uh, listings of one property likely uh, if it's been on the market multiple times. So each time it's on the market, it gains a unique MLS number, which you can search for in your quick search or via address. There's also something called the market monitor. Um, it is towards the right side of your homepage on Paragon. The market monitor is um, just at a glance what is going on in the market uh, in Paragon. Uh, and it um, has just really quick stats by numbers of like how many new listings, how many expired sold listings, price change listings have happened within a set amount of days. And you can set those uh, day amounts. It goes all the way back to seven days, but it's it's uh, just a, a nice quick tool to see kind of generally what's going on in the market by some real quick statistics. Um, and then also the home page is important uh, in that there will be um, messages from us from time to time that pop up on the home page. It'll be the if there is one, it'll be the first thing that you see on your home page. And this is just a way for us to keep you guys informed if, if something has changed or if there is an urgent update with anything, um, anything that you need to know. Uh, you'll, you'll always be in the loop. Uh, if you're you know, on Paragon, you'll always be in the loop. Um, we'll always be communicating uh, pertinent info to you, anything that changes. Um, so Paragon also has, um, you know, a, a much more in-depth search, obviously, than just the quick search. Uh, you can go into um, uh, a, a very detailed uh, full spreadsheet report uh, or full spreadsheet uh, search, excuse me, uh, with multiple fields. Um, and you can customize fields. You can um, uh, add fields that maybe aren't on the standard ones. Um, you know what, I think I'm just going to uh, share my browser screen and show you guys uh, from there. I think that might be a little more helpful um, than slides on this. So I'm going to take a brief pause to just share my browser screen. Okay, I think I am sharing it now. Uh, if someone could let me know, did the screen change at all for you guys? Are you seeing um, a browser page with with Paragon? Yes, awesome. Okay, perfect. All right, um, so we'll see here. Um, uh, as I was saying, the market monitor is right here. Um, this is just a quick way to see um, some stats. You have new expired price change listings and we can go all the way back through seven days. It's just a nice uh, little quick thing. Um, something else you'll notice, and we're gonna get into this uh, in greater detail a little later um, on your homepage here. At Paragon, you have 
uh, Connect MLS, MLS listings, Metro List. So these are all different MLSs that you have access to through us. Um, uh, but you can find that here on Paragon on your homepage to, to transfer to different MLSs, but um, we will touch in greater detail. Anyway, as I was saying, oh, and this is, so we can see it, the quick search as you can enter a MLS number or an address. So this is what a search looks like. Well, when it loads, here we go. This is what a search looks like in um, Paragon. And um, also something to note here, um, if you're not getting uh, everything or if this feels like a lot of information, uh, don't worry. You don't really need to remember all of this because there, first of all, this um, meeting is being recorded. So you, and it will be sent to you when the meeting is complete. So you will have this to reference, uh, but there is also uh, an extensive amount of tutorials and help uh, that I'm gonna set you guys up with uh, after this is done. So you have a very in-depth um, uh, set of tools for exploring both Paragon and Connect MLS. So this is what a um, search looks like in Connect MLS. You have um, a bunch of different fields um, that you can input uh, your criteria in. You can fill in as many or as little uh, criteria fields as you would like. Obviously, you're going to need a couple to get your search started, um, but you can do that all through here. Um, there is, let's see, um, you can also customize your criteria and add, once it loads, you can add a new criteria that is not, that might not be in your initial uh, search criteria. So um, if you're looking for some info, like let's say you wanna search by buyer agent, you can always add buyer agent as a class or excuse me, as a field, um, and it will populate. So there, my, my point here is um, there's many, many ways to conduct a search um, through Paragon, and there is um, really kind of endless possibilities of uh, how you can operate and go about searching for listings. Uh, so I'll just take, I know that was kind of a lot now that we're seeing a different page, so I'll just take a brief pause here. All right, um, and so uh, what you can also do um, in Paragon is you can save searches. Um, you can save them to context as well, which we'll get into in a second. Um, and once you, I'm going to enter a quick criteria here. So um, once you have created a search, your results will look something like this. Um, you'll see a spreadsheet initially. And the spreadsheet, like the search, has uh, customizable fields. Uh, so you can drag and change where the fields are in your spreadsheet. And you can also go in and change what is on uh, your spreadsheet itself. So this is really just one report type of many report types. Um, uh, you can find reports in the report tab. Again, don't feel like you need to memorize any of this. Uh, there's going to be um, a lot of uh, learning tools available to you afterwards, and this will be sent to um, your emails in video form. Uh, the, the point of this is not really to like learn how to do stuff. It's just the kind of capability of, of our systems. So you can go and select different report types by detail. As you can see, there are new report types. And down here are legacy report types. That's uh, just part of the nice deal with Paragon. There's a, a lot of uh, versatility there in how you display your information. 
Uh, Paragon is also really nice in that it has a map search. where you can search um, by map. After you've entered your criteria, you can go in and view res your results on a physical map. You can also um, draw uh, shapes on the map if you would like a really specific area. So let's say you just want you know, a couple, couple blocks within a certain neighborhood, you can totally go and um, uh, just like, triangle off a certain area and only look within a very specific area. Um, so it, it's a really nice tool uh, that is uh, part of a really robust search system that will allow you to have a, a very, very big uh, purview of, of kind of what goes on here. Um, so that is sort of at a glance, uh, the search um, tool. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and get into contacts. So you can add a contact, uh, which is going to be a client. Um, you can add a contact, you'll need to input uh, at minimum their name and an email. And the point of setting up a contact uh, is one that you have like a virtual Rolodex of the people that you work with. It's, it's very nice to be able to pull from that and, and manage your um, your clients through uh, Paragon. But additionally, what you can do um, is use your contact profiles to associate a search with them. And when you associate a search with a contact, um, so like you would essentially just save a search like the page that we were just in, um, you can uh, save a search to a contact and then create a, an email system that will email the client every specific period of time, which is up to you, you would determine the period of time that um, listings that match the search would, would go out to the client. So let's say you want them to be notified once a week with all of the new listings that match their criteria and what they're looking for in a home. You can do that with Paragon um, and it's nice and simple. And there are actually two options. So you can do email and have it set on, um, you know, a, a specific time frame for when they receive messages and updates, or uh, you can do a client portal, which is called the Collaboration Center. So the Collaboration Center is, um, I, I like to think of it kind of as like a Facebook for um, interacting with listings with your client. So they get a portal that they sign into that hosts all of the new listings that uh, appear on their searches and they can go and interact with them and um, uh, comment. They can say, yes, I like this search, no, or yes, I like this property, no, I don't like this property. Um, it's a nice uh, little tool um, for like extended client interaction. Um, which is a great option. I would say that most people probably still stick with the, um, the email uh, system, but both are, are fairly nice. Uh, so those are, those are two really great uh, qualities of Paragon. Um, so uh, something else, we're gonna actually go back to our search because I'm gonna show you uh, something. So I'm gonna show you just like an agent report for a uh, listing. This is uh, at a glance, an agent report in um, Paragon. Uh, so you can, um, you can get uh, PID forms off of agent reports um, and reports in general. Um, and you have a nice little map here of where um, this report is actually on the um, uh, in the world, <laughs> as well as a couple of photos. Um, 
and I'll show you just real quick what that versus a client form looks like. So very similar. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're going to go into just really quick over how you uh, or what adding a listing looks like. So adding a listing, um, you would first see, and as you'll notice up here, um, there's a bunch of different icons uh, with different, um, uh, different names and they do exactly what the names are. So search, you can conduct a search by class or a specialty search and view your saved searches. Listings, you add a listing by class and you can also maintain your listings here. Um, but that's, that's not really what we're going to get into. Uh, we're just going to talk briefly about um, uh, the tax autofill for listings. So when you're adding a listing, uh, what you'll see uh, immediately is this is actually a search. This is not your uh, listing criteria. It's what you're going to add to search for your listing by a tax record. And if your listing is on tax record, which most properties are, um, you will get a really nice um, a condensed version of a bunch of the different criteria fields that uh, you would fill out normally by hand for your listing uh, report, or excuse me, your listing uh, input form. And that would uh, just automatically apply it to your listing, saving you a bunch of time. So you can firstly search when you're adding a listing by tax record to find your listing um, and then import the data. So a lot of your listing input form is already done. Um, and you can always skip over that if you'd like and go right to the listing input form and fill it out. Um, and this is about as much detail as we're gonna go over today on um, inputting a listing on Paragon. Uh, that is really just uh, kind of an overview of, of the functionality. Um, and then finally, uh, we're going we're gonna to move on from Paragon. As I said, this is just really a kind of a brief overview of what it can do. Um, not necessarily how it works, but uh, what it can do. Uh, there's a really, really nice, really great help section here. So if you're ever feeling lost, um, it's going to take a second to load here. Uh, I hope everybody is seeing this. This is a great help section uh, that has by field, uh, by, by like subject rather, I should say, uh, different um, tutorials in both in text and uh, video tutorials. There's also a bunch of pre-recorded webinars that you can click on here that are really nice and give you a lot of um, in-depth uh, training on uh, Paragon. And what I highly recommend is the Paragon Academy. So the Paragon Academy is a series of videos uh, that you watch and then take tutorial, or excuse me, take tests on the tutorials of these videos uh, and you essentially get certified. And uh, getting certified just means that you have seen all the videos, passed all your tests, and now have kind of a, uh, a greater understanding of Paragon. It's a really, really wonderful way to start off um, if you are brand new to Paragon, it can, all of this can probably feel a little overwhelming, um, but that really breaks it down. I can't emphasize it enough. It's just, it's a very, very nice uh, option and a very nice tool. Um, so I will pause for a brief second here. Uh, and uh, if anyone has any questions uh, about Paragon, uh, please let me know. And uh, then we'll be moving on to uh, Connect MLS. I'm going to go here to my presentation. OK. The chat bar disappeared on me. I'm just 
we're looking for that. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay. So I do not see any questions uh, on Paragon. So um, we'll get into Connect MLS now. Uh, so Connect MLS, <coughs> excuse me, is um, very similar in functionality to Paragon. It is also an MLS uh, system. Uh, so what it does is, or software I should say, um, it is actually crafted by uh, realtors. So the emphasis of Connect MLS is to be very um, intuitive, very user-friendly. Um, maybe Paragon feels a bit intimidating, but Connect MLS is, is really visually very helpful and, and very intuitive. Um, so it, it's, got, it's got kind of your ideals in mind um, with what it does. It's a very, very fast system. You notice that uh, Paragon has a little bit of a load time. Uh, it's, not, it's not bad by any means, but Connect MLS is so fast. Uh, it's, it's a very quick system. Um, it's a really nice one. And one of the uh, greatest uh, advantages of Connect MLS is that it's very mobile friendly. So when you're on like your tablet or your phone, trying to search the MLS uh, or, or do whatever it is you would like to do on the MLS, Connect MLS formats uh, in a way that is um, very, very nice and, and fits very well with a phone or a tablet as well as your desktop. So kind of everywhere that you're accessing Connect MLS from, it's gonna be just really user-friendly. Um, and then it also has a very robust uh, client connect portal. Uh, I, I did mention that uh, Paragon has a uh, portal as well for clients. Uh, connect MLSs uh, does uh, go into, um, you know, a, a bit of a different level of uh, overview. Um, you can just really kind of, I'll, I'll show it to you guys a little bit. It, it's just, it's very nice. Um, so with Connect MLS, we're actually, let me just show you as I did with Paragon. Take a brief moment here and we are gonna um, switch pages. Okay. Um, are we seeing Connect MLS now? It should be uh, a page with a blue bar at the top. Let me know, people. Yes, all right, great. Okay. Um, so this is Connect MLS. Um, it's got a pretty friendly layout. It has a lot of the uh, same things kind of immediately you'll notice maybe as Paragon. It's got market activity just as Paragon does. Um, it's the same thing. You can go back seven days. You can customize kind of where this data pulls from if you'd like this data to just be within a specific area. Uh, it can do that as well as just have a very, very broad general assessment of the market. So that is very nice. Um, our blog is uh, also featured on Connect MLS right here. So this is a bunch of really important information that's going to be really nice for your updates and uh, learning new things that we may add uh, or anything that changes, uh, helpful tips. Uh, you'll find there in the blog section. Um, similarly, in the bulletin, um, you do have uh, information. Uh, some is, I would say this is kind of more for pressing info that is like urgent updates. And this is more for, the blog is more for uh, tutorials and helpful things. Not that they're not both helpful, they are. And you'll see also um, client activity right here on your homepage. That's a really nice thing on um, Connect MLS is that the client activity 
is right there for you. You don't need to go anywhere looking for it, it finds you. Uh, there's also some shortcuts here. Uh, I don't have any running right now, but you can also check in on your automatic searches right from your home page. Um, things here are rearrangeable. Uh, so if you don't like the layout of kind of where things are, you can always change it around. Um, so don't worry about that. Uh, I just switched that there to show you, uh, but you can uh, customize uh, your homepage layout here. So um, connect, uh, connect MLS does have uh, a quick search as Paragon did. It has uh, what it calls the smart bar where you can enter in a listing number uh, or an address and we'll go with this 377 Palm here. And it pulls up uh, by most recent every uh, 377 Palm listing. Um, and you can scroll down and, and it's got endless results. Um, so it, it again, it, it only pulls one address um, or MLS number if you'd like to get that specific, but you uh, can see a lot larger of a history of it than in Paragon, which uh, just defaults to a few. Um, this goes into a bit greater detail, but this is not where you're gonna be conducting a full search from. Um, but what you can do is you can click on um, that icon right there and get a quick report of the listing from your smart search, which is really nice because it doesn't drag you into a whole other page. It's just a quick pop-up window. Uh, that has your agent report. Okay, um, so that is the smart bar for searching. And now I'm going to show you the uh, actual uh, full general search. So we are going to choose a residential search. You choose, uh, the first thing that you choose in the search is your class. So we're going to start here with residential. And I'm gonna just go with actives right now for Berkeley. Okay, so right away, um, as we can see, it's, it's kind of bigger font, pretty friendly, really nice, um, easy search tool. Um, something of note here, down here you'll see data source. So data source is every bank of data that Connect MLS pulls from. Connect MLS pulls from a bunch of different sources at the same time. So this is kind of your one and all search tool. This is really nice. Um, Paragon has uh, Bay East and MLS listings uh, and it's there will progressively be more, but um, uh, Connect MLS has all of these, Bridge MLS, Connor Costa, or CCAR, I should say, Bay East MLS listings, CR MLS, Claw MLS, ChrisNet MLS, SFAR. We'll get into what exactly those uh, are in a bit, uh, but you can really just pull from all these different sources in Connect MLS at once. It's so nice, guys, it's so nice. So we're gonna conduct just a quick search. That's too many results that, that I want right now, but you'll see up here, it shows you your matches. Uh, cap, our price, and view our results. So we have immediately a spreadsheet of results here. Um, a nicely formatted spreadsheet. And let's say I like my spreadsheet, but I'm not like, I don't know. I want to change my, my uh, criteria. Easy. Click on show filters and it shows you all of your criteria that you have inputted. Um, again, just like Paragon, don't worry about memorizing any of this uh, or having to retain this information. 
uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, there is uh, a lot of training material available as well as uh, this is just intended to be a cursory overview. Uh, and this recording will be available to you after this session. Um, okay, so um, this also has a map result uh, as does Paragon where you can go and view your results, change your stuff, uh, your criteria, and you can view your results in spreadsheet at the same time if you'd like or you can get rid of that and have your full map a really nice thing about uh, the map tool here is you can draw shapes and create uh, really specific areas that you would like to um, uh, draw listings from draw matches from i'm going to just draw an example shape for you guys There's my nice little weird shape. Uh, so that's that's what that looks like. Um, and once we hit apply, you'll see that my matches went down severely because now we're just pulling from that shape. This uh, this is just a really nice uh, tool part of Connect MLS's really great uh, search options. Um, so this is really all we're going to cover today in. Uh, searching on Connect MLS. Um, so we're going to go back home here. I'm going to check actually the chat for any questions. Okay. All right. So, um, there's also uh, a really nice way to manage your clients. Uh, this is your client uh, page. You can add a client here as well as view their profile. And so their profile is connected with any searches that you have saved for your client. Um, it's got a nice intuitive view, but you can also see how they've interacted with their listings. They are our favorites that they can uh, do with Connect MLS's uh, client portal. They're sent uh, uh, a client portal where they can interact with these searches. Um, you can also do uh, an auto email drip search if you would like. You can check on your searches that you've associated with them and add a search directly uh, into their contact. And uh, you can check their CMAs. You can also create a uh, CMA here. Uh, you can do that with Paragon as well, uh, but I'm gonna show you a great CMA tool a little later. Okay, um, and then finally, uh, so on um, Paragon, uh, you can add a listing. So you know you cannot add a listing on Connect MLS. That is the one thing that Connect MLS is lacking, uh, is you cannot um, create, a, create a listing on Connect MLS. You can create a search, um, associate a search with a client, portal, all that great stuff, everything you'd need with the exception of adding a listing. Um, so, also, um, what is available to you here uh, with Connect MLS uh, is the help section. You have um, video tutorials, a help center, uh, and then there's a help center specifically for the smart bar, uh, but there's a lot of video tutorials that you can access here by clicking on that. Um, and the help center will take you, I think these are pop-ups, so they might not be displaying for you guys. Uh, but when you click on these uh, these links here, they take you to portals where you can go and learn a bunch about Connect MLS. It's similar to the Help Center on Paragon. So if you're looking to learn Connect MLS, which is an amazing tool, uh, you can do so on, um, on their Help Center uh, or with their video tutorials. Okay. 
So we are now going to be going back to our slideshow. We're going to be talking about uh, some other features. Um, I'm going to go back to the, the slideshow and I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to pause for questions if anybody has any. Okay, uh, no worries if nobody has questions. Again, if they come up, feel free to just type them in. All right. So data share partners. Um, we, as you saw in Connect MLS, we have that data bank of uh, all of our different uh, data share partners. So specifically, um, you can uh, view them all in Connect MLS. You can view a few less um, directly in Paragon, but you do have access to actually go on all of these data share partners' MLSs and view their, um, their data. Um, so there uh, are a few here that we'll cover uh, that we have access to. So we have CLAW. This is for the greater LA area. You have Malibu, uh, Beverly Hills. Um, it's Southern California is also covered by CRMLS. It has uh, some of Fresno County, San Luis Obispo County, um, San Diego County, really, really everything kind of down there is covered by CRMLS. Uh, it's got quite a wide reach. Uh, and then you also have kind of filling out that Southern California um, area. You have ChrisNet, which covers uh, Ventura County, San Fernando County, and Santa Clarita Valley. So those are really nice. Um, and then you have um, kind of more up here, more northern, you have uh, MLS listings, covers the Santa Cruz area, San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, um, that sort of like directly south of us uh, area is MLS listings. They've got quite a far reach. Um, and then you also have uh, SFAR MLS, which, as you might have guessed in the name, uh, San Francisco Association of Realtors is MLS. So this covers San Francisco primarily, as well as just the northern uh, peninsula there. Um, but so you have access to all of these uh, MLSs. You do not need to actually go into the MLS to search this data. Uh, you can search um, uh, with these through Connect MLS, and then MLS listings is also hooked up to Paragon, so that searches their uh, directory as well. Um, and then, so a couple that aren't actually on the slide, uh, we do have MetroList, uh, which is the Sacramento area, uh, as well as uh, Bay East. Um, so those are two very helpful MLSs that you have access to, and you can go on uh, those MLSs. They have a different um, uh, platform than we do. They have they use the Rapitoni system, so it it, it does uh, fairly similar things to um, uh, Paragon, but in their own sort of language. But you can go in there and uh, create searches on there if you would like. Uh, but again, you can you can bypass that and just do that on Connect MLS. Um, uh, so actually, we'll go back here. I'll just pause here for a sec. If anybody has any burning questions about our data share partners, I am more than happy to answer. Okay, that is all right. Okay, so mobile applications. Um, so HomeSnap and HomeSpotter. Uh, these can both be uh, downloaded from the uh, App Store. Um, so these are uh, basically HomeSnap, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but it is this 
really interesting tool where you can go and uh, take a photo of a property and then it'll go and uh, look up the property in the MLS. Uh, so you can um, get this really interesting tool that like if you just sort of see a, a house, you can take a picture of it and it'll, it'll tell you info about it. It's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, so you have a profile uh, for that through us. Um, it does have confidential information uh, on there, um, but it, it does have the ability to generate a rapid CMA. You can schedule the showing through HomeSnap uh, as well as, as I mentioned, you can do that photo search um, with photos properties. Uh, and then um, HomeSnap, or excuse me, HomeSpotter uh, has live uh, MLS data, uh, like an augmented reality uh, search. Uh, so you can, it's kind of like Google Maps, um, Street View, it's pretty cool. And uh, then you can share this app with clients as well. It's not agent only, whereas HomeSnap is agent only. Okay, uh, so kind of uh, in conjunction with that, here are a couple of different um, apps, different products that you have, uh, courtesy of being a member with us. Uh, HomeSnap, as we talked about, is a platform for agents. Uh, it displays uh, all the listing information and you can create a CMA there. Uh, you can see um, off-market property information as well. Uh, HomeSpotter uh, is um, like, kind of a, a real estate search with built-in chat uh, that makes collaboration fast and it's, it's great. Uh, and you have uh, realtor.com, which is a mobile platform for agents. Um, HomeSnap displays uh, all of uh, realtor.com's listing information. You can also create CMAs from realtor.com's pro search. Um, you have access to uh, Realtors Property Resources, RPR. Uh, if you are an NAR member, which hopefully you are. Um, and so this has, uh, this and Real-Time MLS, these all kind of have a lot of really nice uh, kind of uh, assortments of tools for you guys. Uh, but what you're gonna be using uh, probably more often, so those are more geared towards kind of mobile on the go, uh, things is uh, this set of tools. So this set of tools, uh, we're going to begin with Disclosures.io. Disclosures.io um, is a really nice way of, it's, it's kind of similar to zip forms. If you use it, it's a nice way to assemble a disclosure package um, and you can have things signed virtually, send things virtually. Um, you can have PDFs that you can fill out online. It saves a lot of time. You can uh, kind of do this in lieu of having to send physical paperwork. It's, it's a very nice tool. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a pretty popular thing that you know people generally link to their listings so that people can uh, do paperwork for their listings through disclosures.io. So, um, Next, we have the cloud suite. You have cloud MLX, cloud streams, and cloud CMA. So cloud MLX is a search tool similar to a search tool on um, you know, one of uh, our platforms. It is uh, you know, essentially just kind of does the search function of uh, Paragon um, outside of actually being in Paragon and uh, cloud streams. Uh, is designed to um, give listing alerts. So it is essentially like a, um, a notification system for clients. So these two are kind of alternatives um, to uh, creating a, a client portal uh, in Connect MLS or Paragon. Uh, these are just alternatives if you would like to use them. However, I, I do emphasize uh, using Paragon or uh, Connect MLS as your primary means of doing this, uh, just kind of in lieu of keeping everything in one place. That being said, I think the most useful uh, and greatest 
tool that the Cloud Suite offers that you're definitely going to want to check out and use is Cloud CMA. Cloud CMA is a wonderful, quick, easy way of creating a comparative market analysis report, a CMA. Uh, it's this really nice intuitive software where you can actually take um, listings from the MLS and import them onto your CMA. So if you want really specific listings on your comparables report, you can do that. You can also allow it to generate um, comps for you. So you can enter in a address for your listing property that you would like to uh, get comps for, and it'll just automatically, and you can have just that, nothing more, and it'll give you a bunch of different comps for your report. It's a really nice tool, and creating a CMA can sometimes feel like a lot, and Cloud CMA can really, really simplify that and really make the process go from like, I don't know, feeling like it might take hours to 15 minutes, if that. Cloud CMA is a very fast, nice way. It has a bunch of um, uh, like templated um, report uh, pages for you to insert or take out. It's, it's just got a really nice um, set of um, formats and templates for you to use. And it, it is a standard. So a lot of offices, I would actually dare to say most offices have their standard templates in Cloud CMA. So if you connect to Cloud CMA, uh, your office probably has a template uh, for your CMA reports already set up there that you can go and um, create a report based on their standard. So it, um, it's, it's a nice cohesive thing uh, for offices and agents. Uh, and then we have CRS tax data, uh, which is a another incredibly power tool, powerful tool. This is searching by tax record in a very full way. It's, it's a very detailed, uh, comprehensive way of searching tax record. This is, as we mentioned earlier, uh, in posting a listing on uh, Paragon. Uh, the first thing that it'll ask you to do, uh, which you can bypass if you'd like, but the first thing that it'll ask is, hey, can you search the tax record for this listing so we can autofill some of your uh, listing input sheet? That comes from CRS data. So CRS data maintains uh, tax records uh, and data for properties. Um, really everywhere, you're going to be using it for California most likely, but this is a really endless tool, excuse me, an endless tool uh, that gives you um, a huge advantage. You really need uh, this uh, tax uh, data tool um, and you can you can find out property history going back for you know the longest time. It's, it's uh, really great. Uh, and then finally here we have box browning. Box Brownie, that's this little icon in the bottom right here. Box Brownie is um, a service that is based in uh, photography. So it's a really nice tool. It, it allows you to get photos, professional quality photos, um, and virtual tours, virtual staging um, for your listings. So you have an advantage already here being a member with us. You have um, an insight into getting professional photography done. Um, it's, it's honestly, like it's really cost effective. Um, it's pretty, pretty great rates, but also as a member, you from time to time get member exclusive discounts. So they, they're very regular, regularly actually uh, will supply you guys with, um, you know, really large discount codes so you can get that photography those virtual tours which are more important now than ever uh, done for even cheaper than they already are so box browning is a tool that you are going to definitely want to check out um, it is part of your um, application suite through us and actually while we're talking about products i am going to go back to 
the browser and show you guys something. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our browser. So this is, um, I just logged in at bridgemls.com, which is where you're gonna log in to, <clears throat> excuse me, most of you, I'm gonna take a drink here. <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. All right, so bridgemls.com is where you're gonna want to uh, log in primarily. And uh, once you log in, you will see um, your host of applications here. And uh, as you notice, a lot of those that we just talked about are here, all of them are really, um, as well as the different MLSs that you can log into. So that's where you'll find a quick portal, a single sign-on portal to all of these, uh, these different applications that you have through us. Okay. Back here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pause briefly and take questions if we have any about our products so far. Okay, uh, all right, so moving on. We have a couple of more products here. Um, so we have New Home Source Professional, which is a site that allows you uh, an expansive list of builders, developers, um, and new homes in the market. Uh, so that's a nice resource to have. There's Rateplug, which is a market, mortgage marketing platform that integrates real-time mortgage payment information. Uh, you have Data Master, which is an appraisal software uh, for listings, uh, and then Keyboom, uh, which lets clients search uh, for homes on your TV, which is pretty great. Uh, if you're watching TV, you're like, nah, I don't want to watch TV anymore. Let me look at listings. You can totally do that with Keyboom. All right. Uh, so kind of back to our uh, coverage area here, uh, we have coverage for over 80% of the state. Um, you can, as you can see here, you can list uh, and search directly in Alameda, Contra Costa, San Jose, Santa Clara, San Francisco, Sacramento, Nevada counties, as well as a bunch more. Uh, the data share for the Southern California uh, listings is search only, or those Southern California MLSs, I should say, is search only. So um, San Diego County, Orange County, LA, uh, those places is search only. Um, you cannot uh, list in those uh, counties through us, but you can, uh, as we were talking about earlier, uh, look at that data all day. Okay, uh, so I was on this a little bit earlier or just earlier actually, uh, bridgemls.com. Um, so I'm gonna go back to that site and we'll explore it together. Okay, so this here is www.bridgemls.com. Uh, you'll get pretty familiar with this as time goes on. This is where you, uh, this is your hub really for entrance. So. Um, to log in firstly to uh, access Paragon Connect MLS, all of these applications, we click on MLS login. It, I'm already signed in, so you're not seeing it, but there is a, a login screen right after. Uh, your username is gonna be the letter R, capital or lowercase, does not matter, the letter R, and then your DRE number, and then whatever password that you have set for uh, your membership here. And you have access uh, to all of these different applications as well as direct access into the different uh, MLSs. Um, you also have direct access to Connect MLS if you wanna step over that and go right to Connect MLS through here. Uh, and then you also have uh, your member portal. 
So member portal is a pretty important, I'm gonna just sign in here to show you it's a pretty important part of um, all of this. So your member portal, uh, first of all, it's where you sign up for classes. You may have probably already uh, gone there if you signed up for this class through the education tab. Um, you can also pay your account balances here. And as well as you'll see at a glance, your upcoming events. Upcoming events are um, classes that you've registered for. And then your profile. So your profile is, this is very important. So oftentimes people will call in and they'll want to change their information. Uh, they'll want to um, change maybe their email, their primary email on uh, Paragon. And you don't actually do that on Paragon. You do that through uh, your member portal here. So you would just click on my profile and you can then edit your info there and update it. And updating your information there um, will take about an hour to synchronize over, but it is where you change your information for Paragon and Connect MLS, uh, your contact info, basically. Uh, you can also save a card on file uh, for payments. Uh, that's nice and helpful, so you don't got to, you don't have to, repeatedly put in a brand new card. Um, so uh, you can, as I mentioned earlier, you can pay your account balances here, and you can also view your payment history by clicking on the history tab, select the year, and view your history. Um, also on here is an online shop. Uh, our shop is managed through uh, the association, uh, the Bridge Association of Realtors, um, but uh, you can buy uh, products here, physical products right here. So that is your member portal. That is going to be a very uh, important part of your purview here. And again, that is accessible through bridgemls.com. Okay. Um, oh, something I actually did not just show you there um, is we have we do have a live chat option. You'll see um, towards the bottom in orange. There's um, we do offer live chat support. Uh, Monday through Friday from 9 to 5. That is also the uh, same um, hours as our phone support. So uh, you can go and do that there. Uh, I'm going to show you also our area locator, our area map tools. These are really nice um, and you're going to definitely want to take advantage of them. So if you scroll down, first of all, if you scroll down on our site, there's a nice helpful coverage map um, that just really quickly shows you kind of where the different MLSs cover. And these are all MLSs that you have access to. And you can always right click and save image as if you'd like to keep this um, graphic for yourself. It's really nice. I would recommend grabbing it. Um, but if you scroll all the way down here on our homepage, there is the area locator and area maps. So area maps um, are maps of different, the different uh, areas uh, that you'll be using for your uh, area field when you input that into a search. So um, this is not, this is the uh, area number. This is not like your zip number, the zip code. This is a different, this is an identifier. Um, through, determined through associations. These are the identifiers that split up uh, regions um, that uh, you can search sp for specific um, coverage in or specific uh, availability in for your searches here. Um, and so we have all these different maps that show you which area, like there's a bunch of different ones in Berkeley, for instance, and it shows you kind of where each street is, and 
what uh, what's covered in each area. You can download each map individually um, or click on this PDF for all of them. What is immensely helpful though, because that feels like a lot probably, is our area locator tool. So you'll choose the, uh, the area, you'll input the address and it's gonna show you what area your listing is in. So like when you're listing uh, a property, it's gonna ask you for your area number. And you can easily just find that here if you don't know it. Um, and if you're looking for comps uh, and you don't know your area number or, or the area of generally where you wanna look, come here and find it. It's a really, really nice tool uh, that saves people a lot of time. I highly recommend that. All right, uh, any questions on anything on bridgemls.com? Okay, um, all right. Oh, and then um, also uh, our live stream open houses. Um, so the what you can add now, uh, for open houses for your listing uh, is a live stream open house. We also had a virtual tour in the virtual tour, um, or excuse me, in the tour fields uh, on Paragon when you're inputting a listing. So um, this is kind of going back to Paragon, but this is a, uh, this is an option um, that you can like easily input a live stream URL. Um, so you would go to, um, this may not look familiar, but this is when you're adding a listing, there's an add and edit open house uh, option where you can go in and it does require live stream right now due to COVID. Uh, but when this is all over, you can still add live stream open houses. Um, and this will be syndicated out as well as for tours. It's really nice. Um, and you can generate your links from whatever um, streaming sites that you're planning on doing your live streams from um, and you can post them there and schedule the date for when they start. All right so this is a this is a picture of box brownie for your virtual staging uh, needs as well as virtual tours. Um, very nice. Oh yeah and then finally uh, here with kind of um, what you can do is there are PEED forms really easily. This is actually not, this slide is a little bit outdated. This is not coming soon, this is current. You have easily accessible PEED forms um, now integrated uh, on Connect MLS and Paragon for your listings. You will see a little um, icon there next to the map on uh, uh, an, a report on Connect MLS uh, or Paragon where that you, people can simply click and get PEED forms for. It's compatible with DocuSign. Uh, you can send these PEED forms with the URLs so you can email them very easily. Um, and people can fill them out really quickly. It's a very nice new thing that we have for you guys. Um, and then another new thing that we have, as you can see, it was just released on the 25th of August, is Showing Time. So Showing Time is a really nice tool that uh, allows people to easily schedule tours for your listings. Uh, right now, obviously tours are very limited in what they can be. Uh, so this is a nice way for people to get their, their 15 minutes or get their little allotted amount of time and schedule them and, and request them. Um, so you are, when you post a listing, you are opted into this automatically. You can always opt out of using showing time if you have another application that you prefer to use for scheduling um, showings, but you can do that easily with showing time as well through us. Um, so uh, what you want to do uh, is uh, use the schedule a showing link uh, to request showings on other agents listings if you want to schedule a listing yourself, uh, or you can access through the homepage of Paragon uh, showing time to go and manage your own uh, listings. 
Um, so there are uh, notification preferences. You can, you can do a uh, two-way text option, which is really nice. Um, you can add buyer appointments, you can share updates, uh, and then there is also a mobile app for showing time that you can download as well. Uh, and then also finally, what we have here uh, is a bunch of, that's me right there, hello. Uh, we have a bunch of different uh, ways that we're always getting in contact with you. We have a Facebook page, we have our newsletter, we have a YouTube channel where we have our Bridge MLS news, where we constantly give updates on all the exciting new things that are happening with Bridge MLS. We have a podcast uh, as well as an Instagram page. So kind of every, everywhere that you could look, we're there um, with updates and, and uh, news and exciting new things waiting for you. Uh, so uh, feel free to get connected with us there. Um, and so that is going to be it for this first section. Um, if you have any questions ever, do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, our technical support line is 925-363-2333. You can um, find this number also on our homepage. Uh, if you don't remember it, it's also if you ever email any of us, it's on our footer of our emails. Um, you can also contact support at bridgemls.com if you would prefer email support. Or uh, as I mentioned, there is uh, our chat support on our website as well. You can just click the little chat box and talk to one of us. Um, our tech support hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on workdays. Uh, on Monday through Friday. So um, for any weekend support needs, if you uh, want to email support at bridgemls.com, um, it may, if it's um, uh, an issue uh, that is, you know, fairly straightforward, it may be able to be resolved uh, through the email on the weekend. But our main support hours are um, Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, and then compliance also um, is, which you'll be meeting Lynn uh, around 2 p.m. today, uh, who is our compliance specialist, uh, same hours as tech support, uh, a different number. The number is 510-809-4545. Uh, this is also available on our site. And the email for uh, compliance, if you have any questions, if you would need to uh, respond to anything, uh, if you get a notice of anything, you can do so at violations at bridgemls.com. Um, so that is it for this portion. If there's anything that I can expand on, any lingering questions, uh, please let me know. Um, we do have a bit of time. Uh, if there are no questions, um, I'm going to pause this for now uh, and I will contact Lynn the compliance specialist and that portion may start early uh, potentially but i will keep you guys in the loop here but i will pause here for questions so feel free to type anything into the chat Uh, great question. Um, because you have attended, uh, you will be receiving credit for the course. Um, so uh, as this is required, just your attendance is perfect. Um, we'll be recording that and you are all good for that. Absolutely. I will be um, emailing out to everybody 
um, a feedback forum uh, just so that we can uh, keep improving our trainings uh, as well as you will be receiving a um, copy of the recording of this uh, video. Okay, um, I, if there are no more questions currently, I am going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to hang out in the chat uh, for a while longer, and I will be, uh, I'll keep you guys in the loop here. I'm going to contact Lynn and see if um, the compliance portion will start early, but I will let you guys know.
Hey, Dominic. Can you guys hear me? Anybody? Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I am here, so um, you can let go anytime you want, Dom. Bye, guys. It was nice talking to you. All right. Okay, everyone. How is everybody doing? You guys bored with us yet? Yes, that was a yes and a no. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm just gonna um, share. So um, since you guys have been waiting, I normally start at two, but since you guys have been waiting, I'm going to go ahead and start a little early so you guys can get out of here. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so um, my name is Lynn Coleman or Lanika Coleman, whichever you prefer, if you pronounce correctly. Um, I am the, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure we're looking at the same thing here. Now I'm messing up. All right, so you see the rules and regs screen right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, today is going to be a brief introduction on um, the Bridge MLS rules and regulations. Um, I want to get you guys out of here fairly quickly. So if you have questions during the time that I'm going over anything, if your question is uh, pertaining to that current slide or you need me to repeat myself, definitely interrupt me and just kind of unmute yourself and say what you need to say. Um, but if it's something that can wait or is not related to what we're talking about at the current time, please wait till the end. Um, so yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get going unless anyone has any questions right off the bat. Going once, going twice, okay. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today are why do the MLS rules exist? I'm gonna give you um, the tools to find more information on the MLS, let you know what the most common rules violations are, um, and explain the violation and notification escalation process. Um, talk briefly about coming soon listings as well as um, the clear cooperation. Excuse me. Okay, so first, why do the rules exist? First and foremost, we exist because we, or it exists because we want to make sure you guys are paid correctly um, at the time that you enter a transaction. The percentage or whatever the amount of the um, compensation is um, given to you up front is documented. It's on the MLS and that is what um, we expect to honor based on that date of going into contract and what it said on the MLS at the time of going into the contract. So we want to make sure there's a clear picture of what you're getting into um, and being able to support the selling and buying agent on both sides of the transaction. Also, we want to make sure that the information that we provide on the MLS is accurate. So anything that you put out for your listing, we are kind of the 
you know, support as to make sure that what every agent is looking at and taking the information that is on the MLS, that it's, they're taking it as to be true and that it's being presented to be true to the best of your knowledge. So um, those are the two main thing, our two main goals here at the MLS is to make sure we, um, that our agents are compensated and that we provide accurate information. So as far as information on MLS rules and um, anything going on with the MLS, CAR, NAR, um, we have the websites that all link from our Bridge MLS website. I always recommend to start at bridgemls.com um, as a rule of thumb when you're doing anything MLS related, just because that's where we have information what's going on with the MLS. You can access all of your um, all of your entire portal from the website instead of you know signing into Paragon out you know, as directly you can it's a single sign on so you would basically sign into Bridge MLS, go into your member portal and it shows all the applications that we that we offer and you can access it from that one stop shop. Also, there's a direct link to the CAR website as well as the NAR website directly from the Bridge MLS. Um, site as well. So um, kind of think of Bridge MLS as like your home base because that's your home MLS. So you can always start there to get um, your updates and things of that nature and let you, and, you, know, let you know what's going on um, across the board. Um, we also have um, what's um, called the Appendix A. Um, it's something that I, it used to be actually on our website, but now um, just to avoid um, sharing the wrong information. Um, I can't, I'm having a blank on what the uh, violation is called, but um, we do it based on um, requests. So if you need information on, you know, what the fine amounts and the process, like you need something in writing or what the process is for receiving a um, violation, you can just send me an email and request that and I can send it to you. Um, but yeah, definitely start with Bridge MLS for your source of information for all MLS news and updates and newsletters and things of that nature. Um, so the most common rules that are violated are, and I'm going to go into each one um, deep in, with detail. So the first one is uh, sale not being reported within three days. And that also includes the reporting of pending um, that includes the reporting of pending and close of escrow. Um, failure to post a photo with your listing. Branding, virtual tours, um, brand, unbranded versus branded um, virtual tours. Failure to enter accurate information. Misuse of public remarks. Showing access and churning of listings and relistings. Okay, so first, Sale not being reported within three days. So once you go into contract with a listing, you have three days from that time that you sign on the dotted line, three business days. Anytime we refer to days on the MLS, it's always three business days, FYI. So you have three days from the time that you go into contract to report that um, status update to the MLS. So if you go into contract today, you have 10, 11th, and what is uh, 12, 13, the 14th. So you have till next Monday to, um, which is the third business day, to input your listing onto the MLS. If you input your listing on Tuesday, the system already recognizes that three day period has lapsed and it will send out an automatic violation. Um, if you go into pending, it's, it's the same exact process. The system will recognize that and send out an automatic violation. There are some um, instances where it, the system might confuse because, for example, if you have a pending uh, show for backups or an active contingent um, situation with your listing, the system is not that smart. So sometimes it might accidentally send you a violation if you um, transitions from one of those two um, 
transition from one of those two uh, statuses. I'm sorry, I just got off another meeting, another meeting and my brain is just like not here. So pardon me. But anyway, if you transition from active contingent to pending or um, pending show up and backed up backups to pending, it might get a little confused. So that is the only little um, kicker for that particular um, violation. But other than that, from pending, from active to pending, three days, from pending to sell or sold is also three days. If you have a listing that is entered for comps only, meaning it was sold off market, um, you will have what's called a SDLM waiver in place, meaning that the seller agreed that they did not want this listing um, posted on the MLS at all. And what you're doing is basically posting the data of the sale onto the MLS, meaning the area, the price point, um, description of the house and things of that nature that will help other agents for comparing, you know, data for their, their business. Um, when you input that, you won't do that, obviously, until after the transaction is over and done with. So the dates for that will not be as accurate because it didn't go through the whole MLS process. It just, you're just putting it on um, for data purposes. So when you input that into the system, the date that you input will be the current date. So if, I, if I'm inputting it on 9-9, listing date is 9-9, sold date is 9-9, pending date is 9-9, everything is 9-9 because that's the date I, that I'm inputting that for comps only listing. So when all the dates are showing as the same, that lets the system know that this is a for comps only transaction. And so it's not going to record it as a violation. So we want to make sure that when you're entering uh, for comps only, that you're inputting all those dates as the same, because that's what triggers the system to know that this is a for comps only um, transaction. And you also want to make sure that um, if it is a for comps only, that you're actually typing out the words for comps only, for comps purposes only, or for comps only into the confidential remarks. So in the event that you say you forget to put the dates in correctly and you input the actual dates, the listing date, the pending date, the closing date. If you actually put the real true dates, the system will then generate a violation. So what's gonna happen is when that comes to me and I look at it, I'm going to go and review the listing. If I see that you made that note or for comps, for comps purposes only, it's kind of a common sense no brainer that, okay, this is a for comps only. They just, you know, goofed on the dates totally understandable, no harm, no foul. I will more than likely just reach out to you and say, can you please um, confirm that this is a for comps only, send me a copy of the SELM waiver, and I will erase it from your record. Simple as that. But the key thing is putting those two things into the MLS. The date should always be the same, and for comps only should always be in the, in the confidential remarks. Any questions on this portion? Okay. Moving on to the next slide. Oh, what is that? Excuse me. Okay, so failure to post a photo. So, oh, sorry. One second. My boss is calling. Give me one second, guys. Let me just slack him and let him know that I'm in the middle of class. Okay, so um, when, you, when you input your listing onto the MLS, you have one business day to upload a photo. So if you know that you're gonna have issues obtaining a photo, maybe you haven't had time to get out to the property or whatever your reasoning is, um, you wanna make sure that you get um, an SELM form signed by the, signed by the, the yourself and the seller that um, you're gonna be adding photos later. Um, if you have a listing, unless the agent stipulates they do, that they don't want photos, you have to have at least one front facing photo of the listing on the MLS. Um, again, this is 
something that is stipulated, can be stipulated by the seller. So if the seller doesn't want any photos on the listing at all, then that also is an option that they can submit an SDLM, SDLM form and just stip, simply state that there will be no photos of this listing on the MLS at all. Um, for the use of photographs, if you have photo, your, the photographs that you put on, they have to be your photos. If you are looking at listings and um, you know you see a good photo of a, a, a past listing and you see a photo that you like, um, you can't just take that photo from whatever that site is. You have to um, either get permission from the, that current list, that listing that you're looking at from the past, you have to get, reach out to that agent and get permission in writing and submit it to us. Other than that, we cannot, you cannot take those photos because just imagine if you paid a photographer to come out to your property um, and take pictures of your listing and you post it and then here I go, you know, years down the line or however many moves down the line and take the photos that you paid for and I get them for free, that's not exactly fair. So if you think about it along that line, those lines, that's why that rule is in place. Um, most of the times, agents don't mind. They've, you know, the pictures that serve their purpose, they got what they got out of it. I've never had an agent say no or had an have an agent say that they had a problem with the listing, you, or a listing agent using their listing photos. What I do see all the time is agents um, saying, I would have said yes if they just had to ask me. So it's really just that simple, a simple reach out to the, you know, previous agent saying, hey, your, your, your pictures are really dope. I want to see if I can use them. And unless they're just the meanest person in the world, which a lot of them are not, um, they, it should, it's that simple. And you just um, send that letter over to us and we'll have it on file and move on to the, to the next thing. Any questions on photos? One thing I did leave out is if it's a lots and lands, meaning that you're just selling a land and there's no actual physical property on it just yet, obviously in that regard, um, there is nothing to take a photo of. So that's the only um, exception to that photo uh, rule. Okay, so branding. Branding um, is basically, if you, if, you think about brands, you, you, there's things you recognize. You, if it's Nike, you recognize the Nike swoosh or the just, just do it, or you recognize things that pertain to Nike. Target is the big circle with the dot in the middle. We know what Target is. So branded, branding is anything that pertains to your brand that represents your brand. You yourself are your brand. The brokerage you work for is your brand. Anything that links, um, that is linked to you directly is a part of your brand. Um, so if you are posting um, photos onto the MLS in any, any capacity, your branding information shall not be in any of your photos. Um, if you have for sale signs um, in front of your property, either make sure you take your pictures before you put up that for, for sale sign or make sure you blur out the information in your edit your picture and blur out that information on your uh, photo um, before you post it onto the MLS. Also, if you're putting in your description that, you know, shopping centers, coffee shops, um, grocery stores, um, that, though, that specific verbiage is okay, but you cannot say the specific shopping center or excuse me the specific shopping yes yeah, shopping center so you can't say target shopping center or in near target or next to starbucks or trader joe's down the block you can't say that specific description into your remarks and the reason for that is because on behalf of those companies that is considered um branding for them or um, advertising for them and we've had instances in the past where, you know, Starbucks is mentioned in a listing and it's like Pete's is like right around the corner and they're like, well, why weren't we mentioned? We're right here as well. Um, sounds very petty and silly, but it happened at some point, which is why this rule was developed. Um, 
some of the rules are developed because at some point someone had a complaint or you know an issue with it so we have to you know make sure we're accommodating all these things to protect our agents so where they're not having any um, issues with any other companies that will affect their business um, if you post a link to a branded virtual tour that link is as well cannot have any um, branding information so most companies, if you, if you utilize a third party company to create your virtual links, they are more than 99% of them are aware of this rule and you can request a branded and an unbranded link. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that's automatic that they just give you both, but you wanna make sure that you are getting both links um, for the branded and the unbranded because on the MLS, we have a designated field um, let me show you guys that field. We have a designated field for branded media links and unbranded media links. Um, so obviously the branded media link will be a link if I click on it, it's gonna show me your pictures, your all of your photos for your listing. And it's also gonna have where I can contact you and what company you work for. If I go to the unbranded media link, it is just gonna have strictly your, you know, maybe it might have your 3D Matterport layout, or just the photos in itself, um, or any special, you know, things that you want um, that may not have been on the MLS or anything, any special descriptions of the property would be in that unbranded link, but no information regarding to you or your company, phone numbers, email addresses, anything that, anything of that nature will be in the unbranded media link. Another thing that I want to point out is during COVID, and this is not on here, this is kind of like a, a asterisk um, rule. Um, since COVID, some of our rules have been modified to accommodate the times. Um, although people are doing showings by appointment only, um, there are some people who simply choose not to get out and go view properties. So what we have allowed is that um, the unbranded link be in the public remarks, which is something that is normally not allowed. Um, so if you have an unbranded link and you put it in the, in the public remarks, in that instance, it's acceptable just during this period in time. We will go back to the, the true way after COVID and everything gets a little back to normal. Who knows how long that will be? But um, that is a little sidebar for this particular rule. So everything that I'm teaching right now is the true rules as they should be, as they will be once things are going um, back to normal. Um, if there is a modification, I will add that on a, as a side note verbiage, but this is, these are the rules that you should follow just as a rule of thumb and then keep that other, other information kind of on as a side note. Any questions on this rule before I move on? Okay. So, um, misuse of public remarks. So as I was just stating, um, normally public remarks is only for a description, your verbal description of the property. Um, anything that re like relates to marketing the physical property. Um, you know, stunning one bedroom, condo, great views, anything like that. That's where you're, that's if you're, you know, you have the gift of gab, you can be, you know, poetic with descriptions, that's your area to shine there. Anything that has to do with this property. Um, any information that may be otherwise from what you know public records may say for example if we have a non-permitted um AD, uh, adu in the back or um seller added on a bedroom i mean a bedroom or converted a garage into a bedroom and there you know maybe public market does um, excuse me public record doesn't state that that's an area where you would put that information again obviously that is description of the property um, so I always recommend if you, especially if you have a situation where, you know, it's been listed as a four bedroom and they've added on a fifth, um, you have to, you know, you want to make sure you're matching public mark, 
public records. I don't know why I keep saying public markers. I must be hungry. Um, but you want to make sure that you are matching what public record states in your description of the property. But obviously, there is a, there is something extra that you want to make sure that the per, that the client is seeing. So the, in the public remarks, you would definitely say you know something along the lines that public record states four bedroom seller actually added on a fifth. Um, it's unpermitted or it can be easily converted back to a garage or anything like that. You know, you get the point of just making sure that you're disclosing everything, all the information within that uh, public remarks section that is describing the property. Um, as I stated in the branding portion, there's no contact information, names, phone numbers, um, website addresses, email addresses, including virtual tours, mind you, there is an asterisk with that COVID, uh, COVID modification that is allowing you to put certain um, unbranded tour links into the public remarks, but this is the rule as it should be. Um, never are you to add any lockbox, alarm, gate codes, security codes, vacancy. Um, you're not to indicate that the, that the property is vacant in the public remarks. That is uh, what we consider a security violation. Majority of our rule violations give a issue a courtesy warning first, which there is no fine amount attached to it. But if you um, input lockbox or alarm gate codes into the public remarks, there is no warning because that is something that we take seriously as far as the security of our agents. Um, I'm, I believe it might have been like sometime last, the end of last year. I don't know if you guys seen it, but it was on the news where an agent was at a property and literally got brutally attacked by someone just showed up. So just think if you're going to show your property and um, the lockbox code was put out for the public to see and you walk in and there's someone in there and they attack you, that is definitely something that we take seriously as far as making sure you guys are safe. So there is no warning for an alarm gate code or a security code there is no warning that is straight $250 fine. And we take that one very seriously. So definitely make sure that if you are inputting your, um, your confidential remarks and your public remarks, make sure you, before you hit save, you're putting them in the right spot because the system is um, set up to pick up number sequences. So if it sees a certain number sequence into the public remarks, it's gonna send me a, a notification instantly. Um, and you, you know, you might've been like, oh, I took it down within 10 minutes. Well, within that 10 minutes, I saw it. So um, that is something that we don't really budge on. So definitely pay attention to the information you're putting into the public remarks, because um, that is not a fun conversation to have um, for an agent, especially new agents. Um, you don't want to put any compensation or bonus information that is between seller and agent, seller and listing agent, I mean, excuse me, buyer's agent and seller's agent, um, that is not something that is public information. Um, and let me see, is there anything else? And I don't know now. No, I think that's it. Any questions on the public remarks? If I don't hear anything, I'm assuming no. All right. So showing access. So from the moment that you input your listing onto the MLS system, it must be available for show within three days. Sidebar, this is that SELM form that I've mentioned a few times. This is what it looks like. Um, so get familiar with this. There is a version, a CAR version. Um, if you have, you know, a zip forms account, um, I believe they changed the name to zip forms. I can't think of it, what it is right now. But if you have that account um, through CAR, we do accept the version of CAR's SELM form as well. So you can access ours from our website and use that. And if you want to have it on hand, but if you have the, the zip forms version of it from CAR, we also accept that one as well. Um, so if you, from the time that you put your listing onto the MLS, you have three days for it to be available to show. So for example, if I, See your listing and it's been active for a week and I call you and you say oh we're not showing right now that's not allowed um, if it's not ready for show it shouldn't be on the MLS and if it's not on the MLS you need to have the seller sign this 
SELM form. So this, if you look here, it says, section A says, do not submit my property to the MLS until, and you insert a date. So if there's gonna be work done on your list, if you have an active listing agreement and there's gonna be work um, done for the next month, then we're gonna put that this listing will not be on the MLS until October 10th. Um, I always recommend if you're especially dealing with like contractors and construction and things like that, things come up. So rather than, you know, you know, put two weeks because that's the time they quoted you and then you get to two weeks and they're not ready and then have to have the seller sign a new document and submit it over. I always say add a cushion to your time. That way you don't have to bug your seller to re-sign a new document every time there's a pushback. Um, if you are selling it off market, like I mentioned before, which will be that for comps only, um, on this form, it says, do not submit the property to MLS for the entire listing period. So the seller would sign this and check off this box. If the seller doesn't want their photos on the MLS at all, then they would check this box and say they don't want any uh, po photos po published onto the MLS. If you don't have your photos ready, there isn't necessarily a space for it, but I would also use the same option saying that no photos. Um, and then if, if you add a photo, or, or you can just kind of modify it and put a photo will be added on a specific date. The goal here is to make sure the seller knows how their listing is marketed. So if the seller signs it and you sign it, we are good to go. Um, if you're just doing things that the seller isn't aware of and we don't have this document on file, you're in violation. So if you're doing anything, make sure that the seller is involved and knows what's going on. Any questions on this? Okay, so churning. Churning is basically, I have a listing and I put on the MLS, let's say a month ago. It's been on the MLS 30 days and it's not getting any activity. No one's coming to see it. No one's asking to show it. Um, no one's calling me on it, getting no inquiries. As your listing is on the MLS, it becomes further and further down on the new list. So if your listing is new, when I click onto the MLS and I search a certain criteria, your listing is gonna be in the beginning of that bunch. As it gets older, it goes further and further down. So what some agents try to do is manipulate the system and remove their current listing because it's not getting any, any activity and then re-input it again as new so it's back at the top of the list. That is not allowed, that is a violation. Um, that is basically throwing off the entire data because to uh, buyer's agents and their clients, it's important to understand that a listing has been on for a while. For a while. We wanna know why it's, you know, if, I'm, if a property looks great and it's been on the market for a long period of time, that's a, that is a question that I would wonder like, okay, well, what's wrong with it? Or what's the issue or anything, something that will require further investigation. So we definitely want to make sure that we're painting the clear picture of what's going on with that property. If we manipulate the system and manipulate the data, that's not fair to anyone utilizing the MLS. If you have a listing um, and the, the listing agent, or excuse me, the seller has said, you know, I have, I'm not ready to sell right now. You know, something comes up, maybe they have to leave the country or maybe someone's sick and they're just not in the capacity of selling their property that they've already had on the MLS and you take it off the MLS. There's going to be a signed document from the list, from the seller stating that they are wanting this to happen. At that point, we'll have that SELM form come back into play and simply submit that and says, you know, the seller, you know, has to do X, Y, and Z for a month or two weeks or however long, we're gonna take this off the MLS temporarily. So once you submit that and take it off the MLS, um, that will cover that action. The days on market will continue, either the cum cumulated days on market will continue 
um, once when you withdraw it, if you have an active listing, it will continue. The only way to make the days on market restart is for that listing to be off the market for 30 plus days. And I say 30 plus days because it calendar days, it's 30, but when you think it's really 30 calendar days to the minute. So if I take it off the market today, um, 9 9, and 30 days from now, I don't feel like doing math, but it's, it's going to be around 10 9, obviously. If I take it off the market 9 9 at 2 22 p.m., and then I add it back to the market October 9th at, say, 9 a.m., that hasn't been 30 full calendar days. It's to the minute. So the system will not restart those days on market. If you put it in any, if you don't put it after the same exact minute, 30 days later. So I always tell everyone to do at least 31 days. That way you kind of have that clearing of knowing it's been a full 30 days. Um, who remembers the exact moment they do any action? That's kind of just, you don't know what you were doing to the minute 30 days before. So it's just a safe bet to put it 31 days. But the actual rule is 30 days for the days on markets to clear. Um, Make sure I'm touching everything. Okay, so with this, the, to sum everything up, the, click, the thing to just notice, if you're doing any changing to the status of your listing, there needs to be something in writing to support it from you and your seller. If you're canceling a listing, then there needs to be some, a cancellation document signed by you and the seller stating we're canceling this listing. That means that active listing and agreement that you have has been canceled. Um, if that listing expires, then there's going to be a modification to that listing agreement extending it, which is also another something, a paperwork that, ex, that um, supports a changing of the status. If that is, if it's withdrawn, then you'll have um, something documented stating it was redrawn. Um, anything that changes the current listing, whether it's on off market, anything that changes the current listing, make sure you have documentation to sign, signed by the seller. If you are unsure before you do any action, give me a call. I answer my phone. You'll get me directly most of the time. Give me a call. Check with me first. If I see that you're working with me and you're trying to learn, even if you do it wrong, I'm going to call you and say, hey, you know you did this wrong. We talked about this and I'll give you a chance to correct it. I am all for agents asking 50 million questions if you have to, because this is your business. These violations are not cheap and we don't want you to get violations, even though that, you know, people might look at it like, oh, this is how we make our money. We don't make money off violations. That is not the goal. I want to make sure that you, the, that you guys are putting the correct information and are getting the correct information. So if I see that you're, you know, if you, we've talked about this and I go into a listing and I see that you did something wrong and I a lot of times I remember like I think I spoke to her before or spoke to him before I will I can go on my emails and say yep yeah, we talked about this and I'll be like hey um we spoke about this and it's not right on the MLS let's you know get, let's see how we can get this fixed or something of that nature if you call into our support team they make notes and I can go in there and check the call log and said that it says that you know Lynn called on um, September 9th and asked about so-and-so was kind of confused on X, Y, and Z, blah, blah, blah. I'm seeing activity. I'm seeing that you're not just out here trying to, you know, be careless that you're just, you know, made a mistake. Those things are obvious. Um, we can make, those things can be obvious um, based on the notes that, you know, from other people that you call or any other support agents that you call here. Um, let me see. Any questions on the churning? Okay. All right, so violations and escalations. When you get a violation, the first thing you do, the first thing you'll receive is a courtesy notice with the exception of those, of those security violations that I mentioned before. So um, you'll get the courtesy notification. It lets you know that your listing is not in compliance. Um, wants you to take a second look, go back and correct it. Um, 
It gives you a time frame on when it needs to be corrected. And yeah, there's no violation. There's no violation of fine amount. The violation will stick with you, but the, the fine amount is not there. If you, on the next second violation of that same rule, you will get a fine amount and you're, you'll get a notifi notification that says you have received a fine that your listing is out of compliance. It'll tell you how much your fine is, um, when you need to pay the fine, where you can pay the fine, and it'll also tell you that you have to make the correction by a certain time and that even if you make the correction, that does not take away the fine. A lot of times I get, I'll send out violations to people and that have fine amounts attached to it and they will reply to me, okay, I fixed it. Well, that's great. That's what we wanted you to do. But the fine amount is still due within 30 days. And then they'll come back to me and say, hey, but I fix it. Yeah, that's not what the action was committed. That's anything that's broken needs to be fixed. That doesn't mean that the you know, consequences of breaking it didn't take effect. So keep that in mind. Um, let me see, let me, I think I have an example. So this is an example of what the fine um, notification looks like. Um, it says, your listing is not in compliance within the Bridge MLS rules and regulation. A fine has been assessed. That is the first sentence. At the top here, it says notice of fine has been assessed. Oops. Um, so that's the first thing you see. Um, it tells you, goes on to say, please be advised that the correction of your violation does not excuse the fine imposed. Your fine amount will be due within 30 days of this notice's issued date. Payments can be made at. So it gives you everything you need to know in this first paragraph. Down here, it tells you how much your fine is. And this is grace period date is the date that you have to correct your violation. This is not the date that you have to pay. The 30, day, 30 days from the time you receive the violation is when that, um, takes effect. A side note with this, the reason why I use this particular rule, sale not being reported in my example is because this is the one that could be kind of tricky to people. I keep doing that, sorry. So sale not being reported. So if I sold my listing um, on July 14th, as shown in this example, and then I did not report it until 8.10, is there's nothing for me to correct about that. There's no way I can change the date, the date that it closed. There's no way I can change the date that I inputted the um, transaction. The action in itself is a done deal. So although the generic formatting of this says, please correct your listing, there is no correction to be made in this instance. Only time there is a correction to be made if you actually just simply miskeep the date information, the date input. Um, to that, you would just simply email me and say, hey, I received this violation. It actually closed on 8-10 and I reported it on 8-10. I just, you know, mixed up the dates and input the wrong thing. I will then ask you to send me a copy of the listing agreement, um, excuse me, the copy, copy of the closing agreement or closing statement that verifies the date of closure, and I will make that correction for you. So this particular rule in, is one of the you know, exceptions to the whole you know, make a correction. There is no way to make a correction. I always get people reply to this email and say, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, there is nothing you can do because unless you can go back in time and make the dates be different, which is impossible, there's nothing you can do here. Um, so this is the fine notification. Oops. This is the courtesy violation. So it says, first thing it says is courtesy notice of warning. And it says this courtesy, this is a first thing it says, this is a courtesy notification. Your MLS listing is not within compliance. No fine will be assessed at this time. However, please correct your data within the grace period given below. So 
I always get people receive this. They see that it's a violation. They panic and they call me and say, what do I do? How do I, how much is my fine? Just read the email. It doesn't say anything about a fine. It's telling you that you need to correct something. Again, same, same situation with this listing. Um, still not being reported. There is no correction to be made here. This is strictly just a courtesy warning that you received that's on your record. So the next time that you, um, the next time that you, you know, violate this same rule, it will be your second violation. We, the violations, um, the number of violations are accrued per rule. So if you violate um, cell not being reported the first time, and then the next uh, time you violate uh, misuse of the public remarks, for each of those, their first time violations. So they're, they stand alone, we don't merge the two. So you're gonna get a courtesy warning for a cell not being reported and you're gonna get a courtesy warning for misuse of the public remarks. Now, the second time you violate each of those, each of those violations or each of those rules, then it will be a second violation. You'll get a fine amount, your second fine amount for um, misuse of public remarks and you'll get a second um, violation with a fine amount for still not being reported. Let me see. Okay, moving on. Unless you guys have any questions. All right, I'm gonna do a pop quiz. I don't know if y'all still there. Nobody's saying nothing. All right, so. I'm here. Huh? <laughs> Thank you, somebody. I'm like, I, I know I said cold questions, but usually I get at least one. <laughs> All right. No pop, no pop quiz, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're saying you know you was going to fail, huh? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So coming soon listings. So a coming soon listing um, basically is kind of a way to pre-market your listing and let agents know um, that although it's not quite ready, it may not quite be ready currently, but I have this listing coming up. So as a buyer's agent, if I see this coming soon listing, it's not, and for the record, it's not something that's public. Only agents can see this information. Our, our members, our, our agent members can see this information. So if I have a client and I know they're looking for a three bedroom house in Montclair and it has specific criteria. If I know this already and I'm and I'm looking on the MLS to see what's coming up, this is something that I know I can I can look at this and say, oh well, it's not quite there yet, but it's going to be on the market within the next thirty days or a couple weeks or whenever it is, and you can kind of have that in your back pocket for your for your agent. Um, there are instances where um, agents will they'll they'll put their listing as a coming soon, and a buyer's agent will um, you know see it and just based off the pictures, and or maybe they'll you know do a drive by and go check it out, and maybe their client likes it right away. Um, the seller has the option to go ahead and uh, sell that property to that agent while it's still in or excuse me, to that buyer while it's still in coming soon status. Um, with this transaction, there will be an SELM form in place. It will say that this listing is, um, it is an active listing, but it's currently off market till X, Y, and Z date. As long as this is signed by the seller and you, you are within compliance. We cannot tell the seller that they can't sell or show a property that is in the coming soon status that is the seller's prerogative to you know want to get it over with. if they if they get the right offer or they get the right buyer and they feel a certain way about it that is up to them but long as you as the agent have your prop proper documentation signed and submitted to the mls you are within compliance is there any questions on coming soon okay so no, ma'am <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so clear cooperation. Um, clear cooperation is something that's uh, fairly new. It uh, rolled out May 1st. It has created quite a stir amongst our uh, the real uh, amongst the real estate community. 
What clear, clear cooperation states is within one business day of marketing a property to the public, the listing broker must submit the listing to the MLS for cooperations with other MLS participants. Public marketing includes, but is not limited to, now I'm reading this one's verbatim because it's very specific. Um, public marketing includes, but is not limited to, flyers displayed in windows, yard signs, digital marketing on public facing websites, brokerage websites, displays including IDX and VOW, um, digital communication in, communication, excuse the Lord, um, digital communications, marketing, email blasts, multi brokerage listing, sharing networks, and applications available in general to the general public. So basically what this means is um, if your listing is not on the MLS, you are not allowed to market this property to the public in any kind of way. Um, if the seller has signed that SELM form and they don't want their listing marketed, then it's, that includes all avenues of marketing. Um, what you are allowed to do is you are out, you are allowed to market it in-house with your brokerage to your other, to the other agents within your same brokerage. Um, you'll hear the term pocket listings. This refers to park, pocket listings. If, now going back to the coming soon status, if you have a listing that is coming soon and it's on the MLS as a coming soon, that covers that request that if you are marketing a listing, it's on the MLS. That um, constitutes as being on the MLS, even if it's incoming soon status. So if it's incoming soon status, you are allowed to market it to the public. Um, like I said before, business day, um, anytime we say days, business day is what we're meaning. Um, Saturday, Sunday, or federal state holidays are not considered business days. So Friday to Monday is considered one business day. Pretty straightforward on that. Any questions about statement 8.0 or clear cooperation? Well, that is my time. If you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask them. Nothing. Well, my information is here. If you have any questions or you think of anything down the line, you can email me or call me directly. Um, yeah. Really no questions? Nobody gonna ask me how my day is going or nothing? No. <laughs> You guys are so quiet. Good <laughs> Lord. <laughs> then I'll say, how you doing? Are you Hi. Good? Are you enjoying this daytime and the nighttime, a nighttime and the daytime that we're having right now? <laughs> this uh, no, no. Exactly. It's, <laughs> it's so scary. weird. It's yeah. so weird. I'm like, my light, my light bill doesn't like this. I got the, the lights on all day. Right, exactly. I, I'm gonna be honest. I turn my lights off because it's like, no, this ain't right. <laughs> well, so, I, my apartment doesn't get direct sunlight, so if I turn it off, I'm in the dark. Period. Gotcha. So I have to have something on, especially with this. But it's yeah, it's been interesting. Well, I appreciate all the information. Thank you so much. Very informative. No problem. Yes, yeah. and like I said, if you guys have any questions, please call me first, myself or. Um, if you call the support line, you'll get Dominic, and if he can't answer, he'll refer you to me, but call us first before you make a mistake. Even if you make, if you realize you make a mistake and you call after the fact, call, call, call. I don't care when it is. If you be like, oh my God, I did this. How do I fix it? Call me, please. So, yes. Okay, Helen, I like your little hair. That was my hair a couple years ago. <laughs> like your, like uh -oh. your little side out uh, your little side shaving but yes um oh that is cute <laughs> <laughs> um if you guys don't have anything else we are good to go thank you lynn that was very informative thank you i think that was suzanne who said that 
I'm going to say I look, forward to, I look forward to talking to you in the future, even though it's a, it'll be about violations. I still look forward to it. <laughs> hey, I look forward to it, too. I, I actually just ran into, oddly, I met, a, met an agent and I said my name and she was like, I think I know you. And I was like, oh, why do you know me? She was like, I took your class and you called me. I'm like, oh, OK, well, can we separate it? Hey, girl, how you doing? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it can, it can affect the energy. You meet, you meet someone Definitely. and you've already had a bad transaction. You're like, Ugh. I'm like, no, I'm really nice. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so definitely call me. Let's chat. And yeah, let's meet positively before we meet negatively. Absolutely. Thank you. No problem. You guys have a good day and stay safe and wear your mask. You, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.